Hey everybody, Jake here with American Trucks, and today I'm chatting with Sean about his 2012 GMC Sierra. Sean, welcome. Thanks so much for being here with me today. Thanks, bud. All right, so for everybody who's watching at home, Sean is driving a 2012 GMC Sierra Extended Cab 4x4. For wheels, he's got the Vision Prowlers. These are 20x12s with a negative 51 offset, making for a very aggressive stance. For tires, he's running the Radar Renegade RTs in 33 by 12 and a half. For suspension, he's got the Supreme Suspensions one inch Pro Billet rear lift blocks, the Max Track rear shocks for a zero to two inch lift, and the MotoFab three inch front leveling kit. What made you choose this setup? Was there some sort of inspiration behind your build? What were you going for with this? You know, for me, uh, it, it's always gonna be a balance of looks and functionality. I needed a little bit of ground clearance, but nothing crazy. I uh, didn't want to do anything like a six inch or eight inch lift, making it difficult to get in and out of the truck. But I also wanted it a little higher than stock. So I figured, you know, right where I was at with the lift, the three inch and the one inch leveling, and gave me exactly the clearance that I wanted. And the stance combined with the wheels and tires really give it that Raptor TRX look where you get a little bit of lift, but nothing crazy and you get a really wide stance, which is what I like. All right, so let's dive in and start talking about the wheels. So again, you're running the Vision Prowlers. These are 20 by 12s with a negative 51 offset, making for a very aggressive stance. So what do you like about this? What drew you to this wheel initially? Well, for me, I was looking for uh, a combination of offset so the, the negative 51 is an aggressive offset it sets the wheels out quite a bit especially with not a really high lift to separate it when it's a little lower like that and a wider track it really gets aggressive looking typically uh, the the 20 by 12 wheels you see more of like a negative 40 negative 42 offset the negative 51 was pretty high for that small of a rim normally you get that high of an offset when you go a little larger in wheels so for me i needed that width so that offset was really what I was looking for. From a look perspective, I wanted something that was black and a little bit of chrome. The truck has chrome accent stock, the, the running boards, the mirrors are chrome, the bumpers are chrome. And so I wanted a little bit, I didn't want to black it out. I think a lot of people were a little upset that I didn't do that. Uh, they expected me to kind of black out everything and I like the chrome. And so for me, I was looking for a combination of black and polished or chrome and the Prowlers gave me that look. Were there any other considerations that you were looking at? A different color, a different style, even a different size? Yeah, there was a time and it took me a while to really find exactly what I was looking for. This was not a spur of the moment, you know, impulse buy. I was very specific and very purposeful for what I was looking for for a wheel. There was a time when I was considering something larger, but with the clearance, of the lift, 33 is as big as I can go on a tire. And even that required a little bit of that NorCal mod, which I'm sure uh, most of the viewers of these series are familiar with, where you kind of bend back a little bit of that inner fender just to give you some clearance. So for me to increase in wheel and tire size would have required a larger lift, and I didn't want a larger lift. So really it was trying to figure out what worked functionality wise with you know the, the the lift that I was going for, but I wanted to maximize the wheel size and make sure that the tire proportion was correct within the lift confines of the three inch and one inch leveling. It sounds like your wheel and tire choices were really dictated by, I don't wanna go any higher than this, right? Correct, and I we did the lift first. So we did obviously, so we installed the leveling kit, which is a spacer in the front, spacer block with some added chocks in the back to give us a clearance. And then we brought the wheels and tires and really seeing that on the stock wheel and tire, you really see the difference, right? When you go from, you know, an 18 inch stock wheel to something this large with a 20 inch wheel and a 33 inch tire. I think the stock tires were somewhere around 31. You really see a big difference when you see that small wheel and tire after the lift. So these tires, again, you're running the Radar Renegade RTs. They're 33 by 12 and a half. So how do you find that these drive? Are they quiet? Do you get a lot of road noise, bumpiness, things like that? That's exactly why I chose these tires. So the all-terrain tires that I put on the stock wheels when I first bought the truck were also radars and that tire was good but wasn't quite aggressive enough to continue with that same line in this size so i did go up to the hybrid the mud terrain all terrain hybrid and again for me because we have a lot of paved roads here i don't need a full-on mud tire right then those are the ones that are get loud the, the tread depth is really deep and so for me finding a tire that balanced both of those was important and so that's ultimately why i went with the hybrids because it gave me the best of both worlds 
results. Now, when I do drive it on the freeway, it's quiet. It's, it doesn't give you that drone that you typically hear from a mud terrain. So I was actually pretty surprised because it's an aggressive tread pattern, even being a hybrid. Do you notice any bumpiness with it? At low speeds, when you're just creeping like through a parking lot, you do feel the nubbiness of the tire because the tread is so aggressive, but nothing that you don't, I mean, this is a truck right and it's it's nothing that you don't get over um and then once you get up to speed you don't feel anything there's no shimmy there's no vibration it rides very smooth for being as aggressive as it is i was very impressed was there a big change in the way the truck drove and handled i i think once we got the wheels and tires on was the big difference when we put the lift on you feel a little bit higher you, you feel like you can see a little bit more but from a drivability really the wheels and tires is what did it and you can feel it planted when you're when you're turning you can feel that track width supporting you and having the rear lift when, when we're towing you don't have as much sag and so that made it feel a little more confident towing when you're the back of the truck is not being stressed and you have a little more support back there and i just felt more confident towing once we got everything put together have you noticed any error with the speedometer or the odometer no i the the difference in overall diameter is negligible and so you're talking about a difference of one mile an hour two mile an hour so it's nothing noticeable especially if you're on a an analog sweep gauge not a digital type gauge did you notice any issues with the truck feeling sluggish off the line or kind of at lower speeds as you're starting to accelerate um i mean the truck has a good amount of torque it's a v8 and it's four-wheel drive so if we have it in the four-wheel drive we get torque from all four corners so from low speed taking off even when we're towing there isn't a big difference at speed it, you feel a little bit of the heaviness of the wheels right the wheels are heavier now and so it's got more rotational mass so you kind of feel that a little bit when you're driving fast again it's a truck and you expect these type of things and you know you don't notice them as much as maybe somebody else would so one more question then kind of related to the tires that i should have asked you earlier when we were on the subject do you find that they are lacking for grip in any way or are you pretty satisfied with how they i'm very there? i'm very satisfied I, I i've got plenty of grip like i said you, you feel a lot more confident when you know that your tires are there and you're not having to worry about am i going to slip is this going to provide traction problems and i've found no degradation at all in in grip or in functionality off-road. I love the way that they perform. So let's jump over and talk about the suspension. So again, for the suspension, you've got the Supreme Suspensions one inch pro billet rear lift blocks, the Max Track rear shocks that fit the zero to two inch lift, and then the MotoFab three inch front leveling kit. Can you tell me a little bit more about your thought process in selecting these different things? Typically Silverados and Sierras have a noticeable rake. Right, so the, the the front end is much lower than the rear end. And they do that because when you put things in the bed or you tow, it's gonna bring the bed down. So they have it stanced that way for a practical reason. It just looks horrible. And so for me, I needed to A, balance that out, also give it some more ground clearance. We did want a little bit of a lift, but again, we couldn't go to the six or eight inch. That's when it starts to be a little more impractical. Being able to get in and out of the truck and access the truck was still important to us. So I needed to find that that perfect balance of making it look right, giving it some ground clearance, but keeping it practical. We measured ground clearance, we measured ground to wheel well, we measured top of the tire to the wheel well, so that we could find the measurements of where each needed to go. And we found that there was a two inch discrepancy. So a lot of people just do a two inch lift in the front and they can level it out but I needed a little bit more than that. So with a two inch difference, we went three and one. That way the rear got a little bit of a lift, front got leveled out. Uh, and then of course we had to replace the shocks in the back just to give it a little bit more room now that the back was up an inch. We wanted to make sure the shocks were in a happy place and they weren't too outstretched and they were in their range of motion. And so we found that that was a perfect kit to put together that did not require knuckles or control arms or you know anything like that that needed to be relocated. It gave me the stance that I was looking for and it gave me the ground clearance. So we were talking earlier about the wheels and tires and you mentioned that fitting the 33s was about as big as you were going to get. So did you have any issues with fitment or rubbing when you put those wheels and tires on with this suspension setup? Yes. 33s, even with a three and a one leveling, it's still going to rub. The rears are fine. The front rub in the front and the rear of the wheel well, more so on the rear of the, of the wheel well, which required the NorCal mod, which is where you peel up the fender liner. You can make a pie cut and kind of bend up uh, the metal inner structure a little bit, and then you trim 
the fender liner to match and it gives you a little extra clearance. It wasn't a ton of rub, but it was enough where you definitely needed to modify it just a bit. The front rub was just handled by trimming the inner fender liner. It really wasn't that bad of a job. It took about an hour on each side. It looks clean. You can't tell anything was done. The fender liner remains in place. It's just trimmed to match where you've bent stuff back. So for me, that was an acceptable compromise, right? Understanding that I would need to do a little bit of trimming um, to make these wheels and tires fit. And it really made, it, it, it made a big difference. How would you compare this as opposed to how the truck rode and drove stock with the suspension and wheels and tires with everything together. I'd say you can feel the aggressiveness. You can definitely feel it more planted and more stable in turns with the wider track. I think the suspension travel hasn't really changed and the ride quality hasn't really changed. The tires provide a little knobbiness at low speed, but once you're up to speed, again, it just kind of goes away and you don't really notice anything. I, I think it's kept a lot of its OE functionality, right? From suspension travel and, and alignment. And so you don't notice it. it. It really is great. Given them what you've done and what you know now about it, having lived with this setup for a while, is there anything that you would do differently? No, I, I we took a lot of time thinking this through, doing our research. American Trucks has been great going through a lot of the customer profiles and kind of seeing what other people have done and hearing other people's reviews about different parts and pieces and really thought this through before executing so that we didn't make a lot of mistakes right we let other people's mistakes inform us right people that have said don't do this for this is much better and taking that into consideration when planning this out and then once it's done it's it's perfect it's exactly as you planned it to be and that's how the structures turned out then i guess kind of the big question because this is always the question with a project what's next do you have any other mods planned i think the mods i have now are more internal we like to listen to music while we're towing and you know windows down so i think a lot of that's just going to be more comfort inside upgrading speakers and things like that i think the actual truck itself it's right where it needs to be it's a perfect balance of looks and functionality does exactly what we ask it to do and it does it very well. So now it's just gonna be having fun with the truck. Well, Sean, thank you so much for being here with me today. I, I think the build looks great. It sounds like it's really working out very well for you. And uh, it was nice to hear your thought process behind everything that you picked. So thank you for doing this. Awesome, thanks, Shake. So again, for everybody who's watching at home, Sean is driving a 2012 GMC Sierra Extended Cab 4x4. For wheels, he's running the Vision Prowlers in 20 by 12 with a negative 51 millimeter offset, making for a very aggressive stance. For tires, he's running the Radar Renegade RTs. These are 33 by 12 and a half. And for suspension, he's got the Supreme Suspensions one inch Pro Billet rear lift blocks, the Max Track rear shocks for a zero to two inch lift, and the MotoFab three inch front leveling kit. So Sean, thank you again for being on with me. Thank you all for watching. And remember for all things Sierra, be sure to keep it right here at americantrucks.com.